The Lagos State Governor, Baba Jideson Wolu, has this week been appealing to the National Assembly to consider granting Lagos special funding to enable it to rebuild what was destroyed during the ENSAS protests. That is, in the aftermath of the violence that was visited on the city by hoodlums who hijacked a peaceful anti-police brutality protest. Coming at a time of great infrastructural need in a city that continues to groan under the burden of providing basic amenities for about 20 million people. Many analysts say Governor Sonwolu's Save Our Soul plea should be addressed with urgency in order to avert the worsening socioeconomic situation in the state. For his views on the impact of the hashtag NSAS protests, the tragic offshoot of that, and the ongoing truth-finding attempts across the nation, we're now joined by Senator Adesheye Ugunlewe, a former national lawmaker who represented Lagos East Senatorial District in the National Assembly and also a former minister of the Federal Republic. He will also be talking about the ongoing transformation of the political space ahead of the 2023 elections. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, two quick issues we would like you to comment on. First, the uh, hashtag NSAS uh, protests and how that was handled, particularly in Lagos. And secondly, uh, the point about uh, special status for Lagos, which is not new. Uh, Senator Remy Tinubu even uh, presented a bill before the National Assembly that was thrown out. Uh, recently, uh, Senator uh, Adeola uh, Yayi, popularly known as Yayi, also brought up the issue. Other senators from the uh, Southwest also joined the argument, but it looks like the federal government does not want a special status for Lagos. But should we have a special status for Lagos, considering the fact that uh, such a, a strategic uh, part of the Federation? Thank you very much. Well, uh, I've been around in the National Assembly for a while, and I know the tendency and the thinking of the people who are not Lagosians and who are not from the Southwest. They think they are not representing Lagos State in the National Assembly, and they would now rather fight for their own constituency rather than fighting for Lagos. That notwithstanding, if we package our proposal properly, it could be considered on merit. For instance, under Section 164 of the Constitution, we could apply for the National Assembly to allocate funds for the repurchase of the buses bond, about 84, 86 billion naira. They will consider that because it is not Lagos State government affair. It is the people of Lagos State. That is what they use to go to work. Number two, if you talk about the, the, I mean, the judges, uh, the, the, uh, the judiciary, that is the court, butchery court, that was destroyed. I don't think the federal government will be too interested in that, or the members of the National Assembly. The people that can be interested in that are the lawyers practicing in Lagos State, and there are many, particularly the people with SAN. They can gather together and raise 20 billion naira in two days, and they will build it because of their connection with the judiciary. That is not a federal government issue. If you talk about uh, the, uh, the uh, police stations which were bombed, that is a national uh, assignment which the federal government should contribute. The stakeholders in Lagos State, particularly the big companies, should contribute. The lawyers should contribute. We have to make sure we, we, we compartmentalize this request to suit the, the need of the people who are using those facilities. So if you think about all the jobs that were burned uh, in, um, in Suru Lady, I don't think the federal government would be interested in that. Those are personal issues. And uh, if they, have, they, they don't have um, insurance, then somebody can do something. If you talk about the toll gate, it's a commercial venture. It's owned by a private person. If you lump it up to your request that the federal government should fund the resuscitation, it is not going to be easy. But let us pick the ones that are affecting the generality of the people. 
like the buses. They will give you money for it because it's part of the, uh, the program of the federal government. Have I asked you about the NSAS protest, what you think, particularly with young people saying your generation has failed their generation? Yes, they've spoken to me too. I said they should not be lazy. It's democracy. If they, are, they don't have PVC, some of them, if they are registering, they, are, they ask them to come and register to vote. They should throw part and vote and register. If they want to have a candidate, they are free to do so. They don't need to rely on us to have a candidate. If they want to defeat us, it's free. they are free to do so. It's a, it's a, it's a contest. It is not a, you know, old people against young people. No. It's how to persuade the, you know, the electorate to favor you. All these people that are calling old now were young when Awolowo was there, or Zeke, or Tafar Balewa. They were in their 20s and 30s, and they participated at Youth Vanguard. So they can also participate. Nobody is stopping them. They should gather themselves together, raise funds, and participate. Whether they want to have their own party, they are free. Whether they want to participate inside the existing political party, there are youth wings in all the political parties. They can participate. So it is a free world. They are welcome. Thank you, sir. I want to talk to you, seeing as you mentioned trooping out to vote, about the Lagos State by-elections next month. And you know that terrain better than anybody else, having served as a senator for Lagos East. What are the odds now of a PDP victory over APC, considering the current political climate in Lagos and the massive backlash against Governor Samuelu Fair or not, deserved or otherwise, we cannot ignore the fact that a lot of people are tarring him with the same brush as the military that um, allegedly committed an offense against peaceful protesters on the 20th of October. Do you think that will affect APC's chances? And I also wanted your take on the decamping of Governor Dave Omahi from PDP to APC, seeing as you also decamped last year. What do you make of the claims that he made that the party, the PDP, sort of took the Southeast for granted? You, I recall that when you decamped, you also gave your reasons for doing so. You felt that the PDP had become rudderless. What is your take on that too, sir? Uh, thank you very much for the, for the young people who want to learn politics. To win an election, you need seven, eight indices. One, you must have a political party. Two, you must have a, a, a manifesto. Number three, you must have a candidate. Number four, you have to a, a party structure that is strong and solid. Number five is money. Number six is X factor. That is the INEC, the police, you know, whoever is participating and the electorate. So pick and choose in the East Electoral District. Let the candidates sell themselves to the populace and let the populace, the electorate choose. But the, the way I'm seeing things, Abiru is far, far, far ahead. Let us personalize the candidate because I am not the candidate. Even if I ask them to vote, they, they won't expect me to perform as a senator. So everything is left with uh, Abiru and his structure. And I think he's doing very well. On the, the, the campaign of uh, the governor of the uh, state, he has a right to the camp. My, my own take is it is the appropriate time for him to do so because the party may be going for you know, a new registration, a new Congress. If they don't participate in a Congress, there is no way you can you have a chance in a million. It is the zone that controls the structure of the party that will produce the presidency. So it is not for the giving. It's not a, it's a wish. It's not a wish. You have to plan very well for it. You have to spend money. You have to go around the entire nation and persuade people. But the structure of the party is more important. Once you have the structure of the party in your hand, you are going to present the presidential candidate. So are you saying for the by-elections that uh, Baramosi doesn't stand a chance? And okay. secondly, I wanted to ask your take on the reaction by the government to all of this uh, NSAS debacle, uh, you know, the, the, the freezing of bank accounts and all that has been happening, the lawyer that wasn't allowed to travel out of the country, because of investigations into all of this, the case with Peter Romoselli that was finally granted bail. Is that the way to go for the government? Well, 
Everybody has been commenting, and it's for the government to listen, that high handedness does not solve problems. We are in a democracy, and uh, we should open for dialogue more than, you know, um, force. And I think the government will listen. On uh, my brother, Badamosi, yes, he will try his best, but all those seven indices, they don't favor him at all. And I don't see him performing in any form. But, sir, let's talk about Igbo presidency. Uh, Governor Umayi's uh, point is that he's uh, offering himself as a sacrificial lamb to ensure that uh, the presidency is zoned to the east, to the southeast, in 2023. How is this so setting that the presidency will go to uh, uh, the southeast in 2023, considering the conversation around that and prominent northerners saying nobody is going to hand over the presidency of Nigeria to anybody on a platter of gold. Are you so certain, yourself also, uh, that the southeast would uh, be the uh, main uh, zone to provide the president for Nigeria in 2023? It requires a lot of scale. Politics is about scale and um, your planning you know, strategy. The, the group or the zone that can produce this executive, the national executive of the party, will probably take the presidency. It is not a, a, a gift at all. You must see that we are back to NRC, um, SDB, STB days, where candidates will come out to be chairman of the party, and they will travel all over the federation, and they will be sponsored, and will go for national convention, whoever wins will win and be the chairman, the secretary, the national publicity secretary of the party. And that is when the, the game will start. The game cannot start now until we cross that order of the national you know, convention. Once you know where the zone, the, the chairmanship of the party to, or who wins, you will know the tendency of that candidate. And that is the person that, that uh, ESCO will, will support. Thank you, sir. I want you to go over again what you mentioned earlier and what you've just said now. There's almost a mathematical formula to winning elections. Really, anything else is wishful thinking. I'd like you to address the youth now who are saying in the aftermath of the NSARS protest, everybody should go out and get their PVCs. But getting your PVC does not make a blind bit of difference. In to anything other than voter turnout. It does not dictate the quality, the caliber of people on the ballot. Can you take us through in that same formulaic format that you have exactly how the Nigerian youth can actually make a dent, can actually make an impact in 2023? What exactly do they need to do to mobilize their numbers and to really properly direct this passion that we've seen? Every home have them, and they will have been bothering all of us as youths, daddy, what do we do? I said, you have two options. It's either you form your own party and mobilize all the youths to participate in that party, or you form the youth group or the new wing of existing political parties and develop your interest through there. What they must do, you know, the ESCO of the party at the world level is so crucial that they must participate and fight for inclusion. The same thing at the local government level. It is the structure of the party that determines the candidate. Once you are lazy and you just lay back and wait, it will control the structure of the party. It has a lot to do, I mean, to dictate when it comes to candidacy. So it's a lot of work. They must come out and, you know, and fight for their rights in the structure of existing party or form their own party and, maintain, and, and retain the structure and go out and have a formidable candidate that can project their own uh, manifesto and see what the electorate will do. Right, but speaking of structure and forming a party, somebody uh, tried that recently and, and the police wrote a statement that no meeting should be held. And that was what happened at the African Shrine with Cheokuti, trying to rekindle that movement of the people. What's your talk on that? And uh, what would you like to say as regards this restructuring debate that has been going back and forth now? On the heels of the things that have happened recently, the, the need for state police, the fact that uh, the police and even the military was overstretched recently by the recent protests in the country, 
What's your take on that debate? How should it slant? What would be the formula for restructuring for you? And what's your reaction to the case of Sheo Kuti, like I spoke about? Well, let's take them, you know, one after the Sorry, other. Sheo Kuti shouldn't have mixed the, the NSAS uh, issue with the movement for, uh, for the uh, people. The part of the local party want, is very free to resuscitate the father's political party. But there is a procedure. Leave the answers out of it. And then write to INEC, they will register your political party. That hasn't got anything to do with the police. But don't mean to mix the answers issue. Maybe you want to capitalize on them. No, 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 they should be separate. Their own intention is quite different from the intention of existing political party. They should be allowed to be free on restructuring. As far as I'm concerned, destruction is the easiest thing to, to, to actualize in this country. Why? There are 68 items in the exclusive legislative list which give authority and responsibility to the National Assembly to legislate on. So that is what we should leverage on. For, for the, it is the easiest way to go. One, let's not talk about transmission of electricity. The Constitution specified that it is only national grid. But the National Assembly can make laws to create zonal grid and state grid so that we don't need to have one national grid. And we don't need anybody to tell you, package your, your bill, send it to the National Assembly to your representative, and they will try to, to, to lobby at the National Assembly. Once they create state grid or zonal grid, then you can generate, you can transmit, you can distribute within your state. You don't need the federal government to do so anymore. Take the issue of small-scale industry. I was very, uh, it's laughable that it's the federal government that is registering small and, and medium-scale industry. That is not federalism at all. They should, and it is National Assembly that can do so. 70% of our economy is run by the informal sector. And you'll be surprised if you visit any of these at a um, very large market. They come from Kogo, Congo. They come from Togo. They come from Benin to come and buy in those small markets. So it's, the, it's an international market. So what can we do? Let's register 50, 5 million and below. Local governments should register them. 50 million, 100 million and below. States should register them. So 200 million, 250 million and above. Federal should register them. That doesn't mean the corporate affairs cannot have a staff at the local government level to do the registration. But you see, everybody must go into the computer to register at the Abuja. We are just not a serious nation, as far as I'm concerned. How can you register small-scale industry from Abuja? Does that make sense? No. It could be delegated, and that is the type of restructuring we are talking about. We are talking out of these 68 items. National Assembly legislate on them and give power and authority to the state and local government. Which you can do. Who is saying Nigerian Railway, I mean Railway Act, cannot specify that the state can have their own railway. Those are the things which will impress on our members in the National Assembly to insist on, present a bill to make sure that you deregulate these 68 items to allow the state and local government to participate in the running of this country. Then the ones that are constitutional will take a longer time because every interest will come in. State police, we don't want state police. That one takes a very, very tedious time. But the ones that we can do quickly are the 68 items which can be deregulated immediately. Well, quickly, sir. I mean, uh, someone just sent me a mail now saying that you were asking that, well, Lagos State can be supported to replace the BRT buses. And she asked the question, is it that those buses were not insured? And that if they were insured, why should the uh, uh, federal government provide money to replace them? But the question I want to ask you quickly, because we have just about a few minutes to go. You were pro-chancellor of the uh, Federal University of Agriculture in Abeokuta, and uh, you resigned later for personal reasons. And we've seen ASU and federal government going on back and forth for about nine months. What's your take on that uh, particular crisis? It is the federal government that is not serious, honestly. What is your policy on education? It is not the Minister of Education that will determine the policy of a political party. 
Do you want a social, to run a socialist economy or a republican economy? How can you say university should be free? Where is that one done anywhere in the world? Is that the program of your party? If that is the program of your party, you pay. There has been an assessment of how much it costs to train an undergraduate five years ago. And it costs about 350,000 Naira. And the ASU are saying, OK, pay us this money per student and leave us to run the university. Those are the things we do. That is what Jerry Rawlings did in Ghana. He closed out the university for two years and said, if you cannot pay, I cannot run the university for you. Till today, it is the money from Nigeria that is being used to run the university in Ghana. In Lagos State, we have 18,000 private schools, 18,000. And they pay average of 350,000, 500,000 Naira. And they pay. You are now saying it is the same student that will go to university free. Number two, another policy, which was done in Sierra Leone, for a big college. The vice chancellor just said, look, give me 50% on the basis of commercialization. And the 50 other percent can be done by the government. So with this 50%, they now said, OK, they must pay. And they are paying. And they are running the university. You cannot run the university free. How can somebody do medicine in a university free? Sciences free. Just go to our university. You will pity them. How they run. There is no light. There are no equipment. You know, they do research just for the doing sake. But if you want research that will impact on the national development, you must pay for it. So my take is simple. Federal government, what is your policy on national education? Do you want to fund free education at the university level? Then provide the money. No, we don't want. We want to just say, university, run yourself. OK, how much do you need to run? We can be how much? 350,000, 500,000 per student. You calculate the number of students that you are admitting, federal government pays. Or you say, OK, I don't have that money. I can only pay for 50% that are indigent. When I was at the University of Ibadan, we were paying. It was the military that confiscated all the universities in Nigeria. And that is the problem we have now. And we cannot survive with it. It is not possible. Not possible at all. I pity those university professors. They struggle, they struggle to even have, you know, submit papers. People that are criticizing them, the, the most difficult job to do is to read. You go and do an exam and you see what you are going to go through to pass. And these are the people that are in the system that will be reading all their life. And you think they, they are not serious people? Those are the people that are engine room of development of nations all over the world. Without them, the nation cannot develop. So why are we now thinking that they are not important? They are the most important part of our system. If you fund them well, they can discover, OK, all these things we are enjoying. Who we'll discover them? The universities, and we are enjoying them, we think it is free. If the, number, the amount of money they put on research for us to have I mean, telephone, to have internet, to have all these things we are enjoying now, you know how much it costs them? Mm. But it's good for Africans to enjoy. They don't want to invest. You invest in, in research, you get the benefit as a nation. Thank you very much, sir. And the point you made about how difficult it is to read, I'm sure the three of us here, we, we understand that. It's not easy, even now. But thank you very much, sir, for your insights and for your very engaging contribution.